Okay, so we've got yet another way of expressing complex numbers, and that's in exponential form. Now, to introduce you to this, I'm going to take you through the theory, um, but don't worry about it too much. You don't have to actually reproduce this first, but you just need to know the result. So start with um, z being the complex number cos theta plus i sine theta. If you differentiated that, then you get dz by d theta would be minus sine theta plus i cos theta, which we can rewrite as being i, if we take out a factor of i, and then that would have to be multiplied by i sine theta plus cos theta. So the i times i would make us uh, minus 1 to get the minus sine theta. Then this is the same as doing i times z, since z is cos theta plus i sine theta. Now what else do you know where, when you differentiate it, you get a multiple of the thing that you started with? Well this is similar to the exponential function. If you do y equals e to the ax, then you differentiate it, you get a multiple of what you started with. It's a e to the ax, uh, which you could rewrite as being a y. So now if you imagine that dy by dx equals a y to start with, then working backwards, y would be some constant times e a to the x. Now this is part of differential equations, so um, we will come to that in a bit more detail later. But for now, let's carry on with the z stuff over on the left-hand side. So if we set dz d theta to be equal to i z, then it follows that z would be equal to some constant k times by the exponential. Um, a over on the right-hand side is equivalent to our i on the left-hand side and our x that was on the right hand side there that we were looking at with the exponentials is the same as the theta that we're talking about on this side um, we differentiate with respect to theta so it's the x um, gets replaced with the theta in that equation so we get this form of z equals k e to the i theta so we just need to work out what k is so consider when theta equals zero z would be cos zero plus i sine zero and that's just one so k e to the i, the i zero would be equal to one. Now e to the i zero, that's just going to be one. Anything to the power of zero is one. So that gives us that k equals one. So we get this result here that cos theta plus i sine theta can be expressed as e to the power of i theta. Now this is the result you need to use. You don't need to prove where this came from. So if you didn't follow any of the stuff that came just a few minutes before, don't worry about it too much. You just need to note down that red box and be able to use it. So let's see how to use it. We're going to write in polar form z e to the 2i times 4e to the 3i. So this is the same as z 7 cis 2 times 4 cis 3. So you know that you multiply your modulus and you add your arguments, so we get 28 cis 5. If you're going to write it out in full, it would look like that. Okay, so how about a division? You should be able to see that um, just the same as with multiplying the arguments and adding, sorry, multiplying the modulus and adding the arguments, it's the same as how the index laws work. So we can just skip straight to thinking about that. So it'd be um, 10 divided by 5 makes 2, and 7i minus 3i is 4i, uh, which in polar form would look like this. Okay, now how about on an argand diagram? So we're going to plot e to the pi i. So that's the same as cos pi plus i sine pi, which would be a minus 1 for cos pi and a 0 for sine pi. So on an argand diagram, we would plot it right here at the minus 1 mark on the real axis. And how about 2e to the minus i? Well, that would be 2 cis minus 1. So that looks like this. We've got a line of length 2, and the argument is 1 in a negative direction away from the positive real axis. Now just have a look at that example 2 part a, what that actually is saying. That's saying e to the minus pi uh, sorry, e to the pi i is equal to minus 1. So we get this rather pretty result, e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. This is known as Euler's identity, and it's quite famous in mathematics for being mathematically beautiful and simple. 